Hello there, welcome. A special welcome to the uh, Woody online service. I'm Chris, I'm the pastor of Woodville Baptist Church in Cardiff. And um, we're, in, we're in the festive season. This is actually the first Sunday in Advent, if you're watching this on the Sunday. And that's gonna be reflected in the service. Uh, so after, after this introduction, we'll have the, uh, you know, the video welcome from the rest of Woody. And then Alistair will be lighting the uh, Advent candle and singing some Christmas songs. It'll be worship with a Christmas theme. And then I'll be doing the message. So uh, enjoy this and I'll see you the other side. God bless. of the world you stepped down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here I am to worship here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Yes. 
sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and to ransom captive Israel. That mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Oh, come thou. Day spring from on high and cause thy light on us to rise, disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, true prophets of the Lord. And turn the key to heaven's door. Be thou our comforter and guide, and lead us to the Father's side. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that, uh, you know, that, that time of worship. 
some of my favourite Christmas music there. Oh, Advent music, sorry. Um, okay, so this is uh, the next in the series on the presence of God. And really, I'm now looking to make the link. This is a bit of a transition now into the next series, which is on prophecy. And so today I'm going to be talking about um, the experiences of some of the prophets, some of the major prophets, Moses, Isaiah and Jeremiah, in the presence of God. And that's the way I'm going to be doing this, um, this link. So let's have a look um, at each of these three prophets. Moses first. So last week we looked at, uh, we were looking at Moses and that whole incident where he was saying to the people, you know, you can come in into the presence of God. God wants to meet with you. And they're like, no, it's okay. You go in. And so this, this follows on from that. Uh, so I'm going to read from Exodus 24. Uh, when Moses went up on the mountain, the cloud covered it and the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai. For six days, the cloud covered the mountain. and On the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like consuming fire on top of the mountain. And then Moses entered the cloud as he went up on the mountain and he stayed on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. So that's in Exodus 24. And then we look at Exodus 25 and right at the end, verse 40, God said, after saying a few things, he says this sentence, verse 40, See that you make those things, the things he's just described to him, the tabernacle and the furnishings. See that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. In other words, Moses went into the presence of God and God showed him stuff. He showed him the, you know, the, the true tabernacle, if you like, the temple. And then he said, right, you've seen that. You've got the measurements, you've got the instructions. Now you go and build so he received stuff in the presence of God that he then came out with and had to build according to that pattern. Okay, Isaiah. Now this is one of my favorite passages. Uh, so I'm gonna read the whole of this. This is Isaiah chapter six and from verse six. And this is this incredible experience that Isaiah has in the presence of God. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, Isaiah cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he'd taken with tongs from the altar. And with it, he touched my mouth and he said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. He said, Go and tell this people, be ever hearing, but never understanding. Ever seeing, never perceiving. Make the heart of this people calloused. Make their eyes dull and close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. And then I said, for how long, Lord? So that incredible experience of Isaiah in the temple you get the impression that it was the temple of the Lord and it was filled with the presence of God. Um, that was his calling and that was the, 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 uh, the massive change that occurred in his life. And he was given a hard task 
I'm not going to go into what God said there, but basically he was saying, you, you know, you say this to the people, but they're really not going to receive it. And when he says, for how long? He says, well, until the end, this was, this was a very tough call. Check that out in Isaiah 6. But I just want to, to, to point out that experience of the prophet in the presence of God. And I'm just going to just do a couple of little things out of that. The hot coals, maybe they were actually the hot coals that were in the temple, you know, that were kept for the sacrifice. And, um, and, and he went through that experience of, of having the hot coal on his lips. But that when he called out, I am undone, that, that word undone, it's, it's to be dumb or silent, to, to fail or to perish, um, to be destroyed, to, to be cut down, um, to be brought to be silenced utterly. It was like, oh my gosh, almost my life is over. I am undone because I've seen the Lord. Because they knew that no one could see the Lord and live. And there's this incredible grace there for him that he survived, that he went forward with this incredible mark of God on him. Um, but I love the way that it's almost like it's almost like he died and could not speak, but God gave him words and God gave him life and said, here is your work and you will speak to me. And then we'll come to Jeremiah. And I know this is because uh, the length of these talks, I try to keep them you know, short. Um, and, and uh, you know, it's a bit of a breakneck tour, but um, what I want to just pick up on is something from, from the life of, uh, of Jeremiah, not so much his call, but in Jeremiah 23, and uh, verse 18. You can look at verse 18 and 22. God is talking about the false prophets um, and he's talking through Jeremiah and he's saying to him, look, there are false prophets and there's all sorts of stuff around the false prophets. But the, there's a key verse where he says, but which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? Who has listened and heard his word? And then in 22, again, he says, after some verses in there about the false prophets, he said, of them, but if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to the people and they would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. What he's saying is these false prophets, wherever they got their message from, it wasn't from my presence. There's the thing. It wasn't from my presence. They didn't come into the counsel of the Lord. Now, this is an amazing, again, this is, a, this is quite a big sort of subject, this whole thing of the counsel of God. So I don't feel I can have mentioned it without referring to it in some way. And hopefully you're, you're asking questions, what's this about? And I think a lot, of, a lot of teaching and preaching should not be about giving answers, but almost more setting up questions. So go away and, and, and look at this if, if, if it intrigues you. But basically this idea of the counsel of God, it comes up a number of times in the Bible. It's there in Kings where, where God's meeting with his council. One of the main places in, is in Psalm 83. Um, if you look at Psalm 83, it's the council of God. And it's this place where there's the throne of God and, and this gathering of spiritual beings around him who he has created. He is the Lord God, the Lord of hosts, the mighty El Shaddai, the glorious one. And it's his council around him. Um, and, 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 you know, they, there's differences of opinion among scholars what that is, but I'm, I'm taking that to be a council of, of spiritual beings. And um, just a bit of an aside here, if you want to read more on this, there's a guy called Michael S. Heiser, H-E-I-S-E-R, and he's got a book called The Unseen Realm, and that goes into a lot of detail on this, and it's, it's fantastic, and it... It really brings, brings over this, you know, this idea of the counsel of God. What I want to connect with is that that is about the presence of God. The throne of God is there. And so where it's important to me and for us in our understanding as being under the new covenant, the covenant of grace, the covenant brought in through Christ the King, brought in through the cross, um, what, what, what does it mean to us? And the amazing thing is that through Christ, we can be in that place. Through Christ, 
Um, we can actually be in that counsel of God. Okay, Ephesians 2, 6. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. I'm, I'm sharing all this because I, I want you to realize that in Christ we have this access to the throne. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. Oh, that is such a beautiful scripture. I'll finish that verse, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. It's all about the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, who has welcomed us into himself, and through him we can access that place. That's where God calls us, into his presence, into that council, where we can receive from God. We can receive the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, okay. Hmm. So each of these three prophets were given messages or instructions or plans in that place, in the presence of God. And there were three different ways of looking at that. But what they were given needed to be spoken out. It needed to be worked out. It was given to them for others. Um, in fact, a lot of Jeremiah's message and Isaiah's, they would not be accepted by the people. And God said that to them, you go to them. But they needed to be spoken out. They needed to be obedient and they needed to go out and they needed to do that. So the main role of the prophets is to go into the place and seek, but to bring the word for others. It's natural and it's healthy. And I've been talking about this seeking God, going into his presence and receiving from him, laying our requests before him. It's natural and healthy when we seek him to want a personal word from him, that's good. That's what God wants to do, it's a personal word. What are you saying to me, Lord? Directions, give me directions, Lord. Give me the plans for this, Father God. I, I wanna hear from you. But remember, it's very important to remember this. We are under this, this covenant of grace. And one of the important things about this is that as Jesus said, it's quoted in Acts 20, 35, the words of Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You see, this is all part of being in the kingdom. And when you're seeking God, this is still a strong principle. It's more blessed to give than receive. The, the, the Lord wants to flow through us to bless others. It was always his plan to have a people that would have a real relationship with him. And, and for out of that relationship of trust and seeking him and interaction and journey, that he could bless the world. He wanted it with, with the Israelites, but it, it, it's ultimately through the church of Christ, through grace, through brokenness, through repentance. But he wants to bless the church and he wants his people to come to him and hear that. So when we're seeking God and going into his presence, we must always be open to the fact that God wants to use his people to bless others and that we are blessed as we do that. That, that's the sort of byproduct of it. Okay, in John chapter 6, there's an incident, um, which is a turning point in the ministry of Jesus in, in the book of John. Um, and everything was going really well. He had all his disciples around. He was doing all this stuff. And the kingdom is going out. And then he gives them some really difficult teaching. And he talks about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And it's like, and they actually, the disciples say, that's a hard teaching. Who can follow that? And it gets to this point. So in six, chapter 6, verse 66, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Then Jesus says, you do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the 12. There's all, so imagine the picture now. There's all these people leaving. They're like, we can't handle this. We love what you're doing, Jesus, but this is too much. They're all leaving. So you imagine Peter and those guys now seeing their friends, seeing the guys they've been journeying with. They're all leaving. They're like, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to go back to the boats? What's happening? It's all falling apart. What's going on? And Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. There it is. There it is. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. You see, they, they were spoiled because they'd hid from Jesus. They couldn't go back. Even if all those guys went, they said, you have got the words of eternal life. And Jesus said, have I not chosen you, the 12? 
they realized that only Jesus, Jesus and Jesus only, had the words of eternal life, the true words. Because from Father God comes the words of life. Jesus, the ultimate word of life, the ultimate word of Father to a broken world, the, the, the light of the world that we're going to remember, remember in this season, but also all the words of the Father are life. And that is what this world needs. Brothers and sisters, that is what this world needs. That is what this broken world needs. That is what this world now that's been thrown into, into such confusion and chaos through the pandemic, stripping away everything we thought we were in charge of and that we could plan for. And there is so much fear and so much pain around. People need the words of life only from Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we have come to recognize that only Christ has the words of life. We need to be prepared to, to go from the presence and share that. This is what the world needs. People who have been in the presence of God, ordinary broken people covered in his grace, who've taken time with him, been in his presence to hear his word for others, for other broken people who need to hear the words of life the words of the Prince of Peace, the light of the world. That's basically my message. That's what the seeking is about ultimately. It's that we go from that place with that hope for others. It's not about us. But we have been charged with seeking his presence and this is where it connects into the prophetic. Oh, thank you, Lord. Okay. I'm just going to share a word that a young man called George shared at a prayer meeting in, uh, in our fellowship last week. This is what he said. Hallelujah. If Woody, that's any church, this was a word to us. If Woody waits on me, I will renew her strength. You will soar on wings like eagles, Isaiah 40, 31. You will reach new heights in your walk with God. However, there is a condition that must be fed, met before you reach these new heights and these levels with God. What is that condition? Well, you must be willing to wait on him. Spend time with him as a community and individually in his presence. Go to your prayer closet and consecrate your time unto the Lord. As you have fellowship with him, you will listen to his voice and his presence will transform you. You will be like Moses whose face was radiant as he was with the Lord in Mount Sinai in Exodus 34. The only difference between you and Moses is this. Your glory will not diminish like Moses' glory. You will move from glory to glory as you are being conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit, 2 Corinthians 3. Because you are in a better and a more superior covenant than Moses. There's no better words than I can leave you with, but those which I believe were a, a prophetic word from the Father for us that I share with you. Okay, that's, uh, that's today's message completed. Um, I'm going to close in prayer now. And uh, just before I do that, I'll say, you know, the usual thing that the, uh, the contact details are at the end. And, uh, you know, we'd love to, you know, sort of connect with you. Um, but let me, let me pray. Father, thank you for your word. I ask that your word goes forth in power. I, I just release it, Lord. I ask that you would watch over your word to perform it and, and you would melt hearts and you would bring life. And you would bring hope. And you would bring healing, O oh God. I pray you would open doors to your word and your word would enter in and bring life. And I pray ultimately the Lord Jesus Christ by his spirit would enter into lives, Lord. I just pray for everyone watching that you would bless them, that you would meet with them, and that your light would become not just a lovely picture of this season, the light of Christ, but a reality showing the way to your children. In the name of Jesus, amen. God loves you. I uh, hope to see you. Well, actually, yeah, let me just tell you that. This is my last message for a while. So for the next three weeks, 
the three, el the three other elders in the team at Woody are going to be sharing um, Advent messages. And then I'll be coming back at the end of December just for a final message on presence, and then we'll go into the prophetic. So uh, God bless. Have a great Christmas as much as you can. But if you're with the Lord, it'll be great. Ta-da.